It's been a long, involved morning already. We have warmed up. We have fulfilled the mitzvah of reciting the Shema. We have spoken directly to God to plead our case. Now we will hear from God about what happened long ago in the past. On page 132, we rise and the ark is open in the middle of the page. recite again the 13 statements of God emphasizing that God forgives so let's read that together in Hebrew then in English Adonai Adonai El Rachum Vechanun Erech Apayim Verav Chesed Ve'emed Notzer Chesed L'alafim no se avon va fesha vechata venake. Let's read together in the English. Adonai, Adonai, merciful and patient God, you remember our kind acts for a thousand generations. You accept our shortcomings and pardon our sins. May the words I say today be acceptable to you, Adonai. Show me kindness and answer the prayers of my heart. On page 134, we're still standing. It's time to say a personal prayer in front of the ark. On this day, God, before your holy ark, I feel, I regret that, I want to, I am thankful for. Please, God. May all of our prayers be answered. Normally, I would be taking two towers out of the ark, but there's only one tower in here for us. Yes, for those who don't know better, this is the heavy one. Okay. We're on page 134. I'll recite a line and you repeat it after me. Second line the same, then we'll do the third line together. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adoninu Kadosh Venorah Shemo. Repeat that. God will Adonai Ti Venoramema Shemo Yachdav. And with that, you may have a seat. And it's time for Torah Talk. And there's a lot to talk about today, a great deal to talk about today. We're now going to hear from God. And the very strange thing about it, if you want to call it strange, it's a unique thing, is our reading from the book of Leviticus today. God tells Moses to speak to Aaron, his brother, after the death of two of his children. Two of his sons brought a sacrifice and did something wrong when they did that, and God killed them for it. 
And he tells he is to tell Aaron that he is going to purify the central shrine, the temple, and the people. But before he does that, he has to take a bath. He has to clean himself. Normally, the priest, Aaron, or the high priest at whatever time it is, would wear very fancy clothing, very regal looking, almost like a king. Today, after he takes his special bath, he wears simple white shirt and white pants with a white belt and a head covering like everyone else was wearing, but his is all in white. Having done that, he gets from the people of Israel, from the community, two male goats, which are to be used for purification offering, and one ram as a burnt offering. When I mean a burnt offering, it means it's gonna be left on there and no one else is going to eat from it. He also takes a bull for himself and his family. First thing he's going to do, he's going to take these two goat, goats and draw lots. One of them is going to be for God, and one is going to be for somebody named Azazel, whoever that is. The one for Adonai is going to be sacrificed. The one for Azazel is left alive standing. Now, he then moves on. He confesses his own sins and the sins of his family, not over any of the goats, but over the bull. He then sacrifices the bull, which means he's got to kill it and get it ready to be put on the altar, which is a really big barbecue. People are going to eat from this but he has to take out the blood. And then with that blood, he goes into the holiest, the innermost part of the temple. The Holy of Holies, it's called. And when he goes in there, he has incense. It's uh, something that creates a lot of smoke to make sure he cannot see clearly, because if he can see the Ark of the Covenant, he can be killed by God. So he doesn't want that to happen. He's gonna be blinding himself slightly he goes into there, and he takes a little bit of the blood from that bowl, and he sprinkles it in a special way seven times. Comes out, and then he goes to the goat that was set aside for God. He goes and sacrifices that one, cuts it up. He again goes into the Holy of Holies with incense, and he sprinkles blood again in the same way he did before. Having done those two things, meanwhile, the, the bull for himself and the goat for the people are on the altar, they're on the barbecue. What's he doing now? He is going to go and take the bull that was for Azazel, the one that's still alive, standing before God. He takes it and he confesses the sins of all the people. He then sends it out of the temple and as it passes, everyone in the city of Jerusalem, or wherever they were, are to touch it, transferring their sins to that goat. It's called a scapegoat, giving the sins to him, to that goat. And that goat will be sent to the wilderness. And according to one version, it's left to wander in the wilderness. And the other one, it's taken to a cliff where it's accidentally thrown off the cliff. Oops. That's going to Azazel, okay? and all of our sins go with it. He then washes again, takes another bath, changes into his regular, very fancy, regal, elaborate clothing, and does his regular daily sacrifice. The Torah then tells us when is this done. On, in the seventh month from the month of Nisan, from the time of Passover, on the tenth day. In other words, today. And it's called a day of self-denial, which we understood to mean a day where you don't eat, a fast day. You are to do no work, and it's a day of forgiveness. And there's another name for it, Shabbat Shabbaton, a Shabbat of Shabbases, or a Shabbat of very complete rest. 
everyone, not just the priest, everyone is to practice self-denial. That's the way things were done in the ancient past. Still in the past, but somewhat later on, we have a reading from the prophets. This particular reading comes from just after the destruction of the first temple. We just read about the ancient ritual that forgave us. And a lot of people were saying, how's God going to forgive us now? The temple's been destroyed, and God obviously didn't forgive us because we're kicked off the land. And everything that God promised came true. We're, we're gone. Ritual without proper behavior becomes a sin. What is the purpose of fasting? Just to starve yourself? To prove that you're a good person? Well, at the same time, you mistrust your workers? Instead, the prophet says, help those people in need. Give the hungry people food. Bring the homeless into your house. Give clothing to those who cannot afford it. And don't forget that there are people like this in your own family, so help them out too. The prophet makes it clear for us. What makes Yom Kippur holy? It's not the rituals, the actions. It's the other things we do, not the ritual only, but how we treat each other. That's what makes this day holy, because we focus on those things. The rituals can be important, but it's not all of it. Normally, I would take two people from the room, and one of them would be slaughtered, ha ha ha, and the other one would be sent over a cliff, ha ha ha, not really. I would never actually do that, but I'd give you an idea of that. We'll be coming back in just a moment and put the Torah away. <laughs>